Hello everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be talking about inverters, more specifically whether you should be going for a pure sine wave or a modified sine wave inverter, depending on what you're running. This is one of the most common DIY inverters out there. The main purpose of an inverter is to change DC to AC, so in other words 12 volts direct current to depending on where you live, 120 to 240 volts alternating current. Now, it's also common to find inverters that run from different input voltages. So instead of 12 volts DC, you can have 24 volts DC. In rare case scenarios, you will find an input voltage of 36 volts DC or even 48 volts DC. Really, the point of an inverter is to allow you to run your standard house appliances. So again, depending on where you live, appliances with a point like this, so these points to from basically any DC power supplies. So I know you're straight away thinking of a battery. Well, what most people fail to understand is you can run an inverter anywhere you have a regulated DC power supply. Now this could be from a solar panel, a generator, even a wind turbine. Okay, so there are two main types of inverters as we discussed earlier. A pure sine wave inverter and the modified sine wave inverter. So both of these inverters are from the exact same brand and they're both rated for 300 watts. So basically the exact same. The only thing you realize uh, just by looking at it is that the pure sine wave inverter is slightly bigger than the modified sine wave inverter. And the reason for that is the pure sine wave inverter needs more circuitry to run its electronics than the modified sine wave inverter does. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how to use these inverters connected to 12 volts and then I'll show you the differences um, after we start to get them running. So to connect the inverters, they usually come with these cables. They go to eyelet terminals or most of the time clamps. Now what you do is you connect both of these to their corresponding colours, so red being positive. So you're going to screw the red eyelet terminal into the red area the inverter and same with the black one which is the negative side and we do the exact same thing for the pure sine wave inverter so just put the eyelet terminal right there screw the red side in so just like that Okay, and after we do this, both of our inverters are ready to use. Okay, so now that both of these inverters are connected to clamps, they are ready to use. Now, for both of these inverters, their input is 12 volts DC to 230 volts AC. And the reason I'm saying that is because different inverters have different input voltages. So you want to make sure that whatever you're connecting this to is within 12 volts DC. So, now to run it, we need a 12 volt battery or a 12 volt supply as I said earlier. So for this we'll be using a 12.8 volt 7 amp hour lithium battery. So now you connect the inverter to the battery. And you connect this inverter, the modified sine wave inverter, to the battery as well. Now you want to be careful because when you connect this to batteries, you will get sparks. And the reason for that is because the capacitors in the inverters aren't quite charged yet. So that spark is basically the current rushing through to charge the capacitors. So you want to be careful when doing that. You want to wear eye protection or anything like that because uh, the second there's a spark there, there's actually very, very hot air that's being emitted and that can cause melting metal to be spewed out into your eyes. So something you can do is use a resistor to slowly charge the capacitors instead of having a sudden flow of current. So, now that you have the inverters connected to a 12 volt supply, you have all the circuitry to change the 12 volts direct current to 12 volts alternating current, uh, sorry, to 240 volts alternating current, now what you do is you turn on the inverter, you wait for the beep, and now you're outputting 240 volts AC. So now that both of these inverters are connected up and ready to start running, what we are going to do is run a load from both of them, 
and we're going to see how each inverter has an effect on running this lamp right here. So to do that, what we're going to do is get this plug and we are going to plug it into the inverter. So I want to have that turned off first, plug a plug in, and when it beeps, it's a touch lamp, so I'll just touch it, and it turns on. Now that turns on quite nicely because it's a pure sine wave inverter, so there is a pure sine wave coming out of this. It's a nice smooth sine wave. But say we were connected this to the modified sine wave inverter, it is often referred to as a square wave inverter as well. So it's not a pure smooth sine wave, it's a square sine wave. So when I plug it in and turn the lamp on, you're going to hear a buzzing sound, so it's a lot less efficient and there will be more heat coming from whatever you're running from it as well. So that's the main thing to consider when you're getting a modified sine wave inverter. You can't run sensitive appliances from it. You can only run appliances that can run from a modified sine wave inverter. Most of the time the inverter will specify the sort of things that it can run. Um, if it doesn't, you can always take a look online to see whether it's a pure or modified sine wave and how that affects the load. Okay, so now we'll be running the same test again, but this time we'll be seeing if my camera runs well off of these. So what I'm going to do is plug this into here, and then plug this USB cable into there, and I'll be, for the sake of this video, using one of my filming cameras. So just this one right there, and we plug it in. And if you see right there in the corner, there is a little charging symbol, so that is charging fine. So the pure sine wave inverter charges this fine. Now we'll be testing this on the modified sine wave inverter. Alright, so same thing, we plug it in, and we see how it goes. And there is still a charging symbol there, so it's definitely charging. Now something I've realized is there's also not as much as a buzz that there used to be when I was running the lamp. And the reason that would be is because the lamp uses alternating current, whereas this over here, this uses DC. So the reason we can prove that is this over here is a little rectifier. So what it does is changing the 240 volts alternating current from the inverter back to 5 volts direct current as a USB for this. So. Basically, almost any USB out there uses 5 volts DC, some of which might use 12 volts DC, but it's still direct current. So something we can pull from this is that if you have something that uses DC, you can run it from a modified sine wave inverter, but if you have something that uses alternating current, you want to be careful, especially if it's a sensitive appliance. And the reason for that is you will be getting a lot of buzzing and heating up, which can eventually damage the appliance. Now something I've had in the past was a heat blanket that I was using actually ended up damaging the controller just because uh, I was running it from a modified sine wave inverter and it was just getting too hot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did then please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.